Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 10 of Local Chat. Today is March 11th, 2021. It is the day in which Mario was di- Mario died for our sins. He was born yesterday, <laughs> and then today's the day he died for our sins. I it was three days later. It was or three days yes, later. He sorry. Rose? No, 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 no. Three days later, Mario died. Wait, okay. yeah. Are you saying that Jesus Christ died on December 26th? <laughs> yeah. I legitimately don't know. I don't know this. That's if what. He ate, if he ate that power up mushroom, he'd be fine. That's all I'm saying. Oh, joining me this week is religious Ooh. scholar Ian Gibson. Look, it is an objective fact. Jet fuel can't melt Korok seeds. <laughs> also joining me is a man who believes Stardew Valley is a game about killing miners. I don't know. Nice. Chris Elliot. <laughs> um, How do you spell <laughs> miners in that sentence? M-I-N-E-R-S. Oh, slash <laughs> M-I-N-O-R-S. I have a Stardew Valley map up here and I glanced at it right at the mines. And it put everything together. Um, <laughs> folks, uh, oh, God. We had a good time tonight. Uh, we are talking about video games. Wow. This is Local Chat. It's the Subpixel Podcast, folks. I never plug that we're Subpixel. Subpixelfilms.com if you're listening to this for the five seconds. Hello to the Apple moderators. Anyways... <laughs> First, before we hit the news, we talk about what we have been playing, and I'm going to start with Ian Gibson. Hi. Um, I've continued to play Valheim. I'll just pay a little lip service and say it's still good. We've been streaming it a lot. Um, it's still great, you know? I mean, are you guys feeling that way? There's definitely games that you feel hot on, and then they kind of trail off, but I realize today Val- Valheim I've been steady on. Is it kind of the same with you guys? I've fallen off like a rock off a cliff. <laughs> oh, really? Is it is it because of the game or just because of, of uh, you? I was playing on two servers at once, and they were at vastly mm-hmm. different levels of where they had gotten. Originally, mm-hmm. the Subpix server, which was just me, Zach, and Will at that point, was ahead of my other server, and my other and we restarted. And then my other server passed the subpixel server, and now I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do. Oh, okay, go. got it. Because I feel weird yeah. going back to you guys armored out in like silver and iron and then i over there like they're already pushing ahead and i'm like i haven't even killed the third third boss yet like i just ah, yep that's fair that's fair um yeah it's still a great game if you guys want to watch more of that we have our sandbox series which is going pretty well we've done four episodes so far Mm -hmm. probably gonna do plenty more it's It's a great fun yeah um the other game that i played a little bit of this week i've been playing too many video games um is VTOL VR. Um, I actually got into this previously, but I came back to it because um, Kyle, another member of Subpixel, has been talking about VR lately. And I realized, you know, let me dust off the VR headset I had about an hour and a half the other day. And VTOL VR, folks, God, it's (laughs) incredible. Will, do you remember what VTOL VR is? I believe you watched me play it. I do. I remember the... I was watching the emergency eject clip. (laughs) It's good stuff. It's basically... A flight, a military flight simulator in VR, which is like, okay, all right, there's other VR flying games. But the thing that this game does so well is something that way too many VR games are just completely stupid about, which is you have hands in VR. You should be able (laughs) to touch and mess with everything. So uh, we actually had a fantastic stream where I played Star Wars Squadrons in VR. And it was crap, not just because I was stuttering, but also because you still had to use your joystick. (laughs) So you're in VR, right? You're basically blind to the real world, but you're supposed to just feel around and know where your joystick is. And then you can like, there's no hands in the game. So you can't reach out and touch things. So you're just kind of like, it's basically just, it's just track IR, where basically you can control the hammer, the camera with your head. That's all VR gives you. And it's like, yeah, it's better than normal, but this is not worth the VR experience. So then we flipped over to VTOL VR and tried it out for the first time. And it's just like, guys, it's incredible. It's, it's one of those very few experiences that sells you on the VR experience because it's like this three, $400 headset you've bought on top of your gaming PC. This is worth it. This is not some tech demo. This is not some stupid thing. Like everything in the cockpit is a toggle. (laughs) 
and it's like semi-realistic so like it's like a 20-step process to start up the jet but you're like you're like apu on boost (laughs) engine on main arm and you're like toggling switches and everything and then there's like multi-function displays so i did um somebody made a really cool mission in steam workshop where it was called the battle of miami so it's like south america has like conglomerated into some sort of military faction and they're attacking the u.s so it was just like (laughs) it was it took like five minutes to load the map because somebody made a (laughs) one-to-one recreation of like miami from like all the way north of fort lauderdale all the way down to halfway down the keys i hope to christ they used map data and didn't do that themselves (laughs) i think they used map data but it, they, they definitely touched it because there was also yeah, buildings and stuff. So. Thank you. I'm glad you're okay. I, I was Wait, gonna say. do you still do the dainty hands when you have to flip yes. switches? <laughs> yes. So oh, when you reach I out for a toggle about switch. That. <laughs> and it's and it's so cool because there's like like the master arm has a cover on it, so you have to reach out and flip the cover up and then flick the toggle oh, and then so flip cool. it back down. That's my favorite so anyways, Smash character, master arm. Game's still great. This mission was like was like community made, so you're like you start flying and you're flying over Miami. And and then your your wingman, it's just like somebody who did like a decent voice recording for this mod. Your wingman's just like, hey, check this out. I'm picking this up on the civilian radio. And it flips over to the civilian radio broadcast that gave me goosebumps because it was just like uh, 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 emergency broadcast. And it's just like National Guardsmen, please report. Stay indoors. Stay indoors. <laughs> I'm just like what's going on and all of a sudden my radar is like 25 miles away it's just like these blips pop up and they're like uh we got unidentified bogey six o'clock high and it's just like who are they and then all of a sudden this rock music kicks in and i'm just like pulling like so much g's i start to black out in the game and i'm like bogey two bogey two I'll fire away and it's just like Ian, Incredible. Ian just vaguely hears <laughs> Fortunate Son playing, and he takes off his headphones, and it's just Maggie behind him with a boombox. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, the Colombians! It's, just... <laughs> it's, it's like, I, we've talked about VR before. <laughs> we've talked about how it's not really worth the money, but every now and then you have an experience, like with VTOL VR, and it's mind-blowing. Now, so that's... What about VR yeah, go chat? Ahead. Do you VR think, chat, do you think someone oh. made this level... Because they want to train their soldiers at their militia camp because they believe that South America is going to unify and attack the United yes, States of America. I mean, Amer- America's <laughs> famous enemy, Colombia. <laughs> well, Will, I will tell you this. Um, it's funny you say that because this game is actually fairly realistic because it's not it's not like it's not like Ace Combat. It's not like Crimson Skies, where you're just like, oh, let me just shoot. I get auto lock on. Like you have to actually like switch to the correct weapon, like set up your radar, like manually target and then be like, okay, I'm within firing range and then like track them properly. So you Mm -hmm. could use it as a pseudo training simulator. The second part is I don't know because it turns out this is just a side mission. That's part of a five mission fan made campaign. So baby, I'm going back to Miami soon. It's it's just incredible. (laughs) Oh, can we stream it? I want to watch or at least call me in. Can Can we stream it from Miami? Yeah, oh. Oh. we could totally stream it. It's I love the it's just an incredible going game. To Miami to stream a VR experience that did not require you to go to Miami. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring it up because every time I think about it, every time I play it, every time I get the faintest whiff of flight simulators, I think of VTOL VR and how incredible it is. And I'm just like, I am like the Messiah. Come heed the call. Play VTOL VR. Um. Anyways, the other game I've been playing is Stardew Valley, <gasps> the board game. Oh, yeah. You know, let's just talk about it real quick. So, Will, you and I played it. Oh, that was this past weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Saturday. Oh my god. Yeah, you you and I played it along with Karen. Um, I put out a whole video on my thoughts on it. it seemed like we had a good time. What What are your thoughts, Will? Uh, I I genuinely enjoyed it. I like. The recent games that use the like, uh, I think some people call it the AI deck. So you're basically yep. mixing cards to create a computer that you're against. Um, <clears throat> I like the cooperative nature of it. They do a good job of a, of uh, putting all the systems that are in the game, the video game, into the board game. Uh, I feel like I feel like some things need some tweaking. I wonder if. They do a second printing if they will tweak some stuff or clarify some rules. I agree with you. I think you made this point in the video that the fishing thing is kind of dumb. Like, 
Yeah. But also we weren't playing it 100% properly, but I also think it could be a little bit better. Even then it was it was just a lot of dice rolls. That was definitely the most dice luck heavy element was the fishing. Yeah. So I think that can be can be fixed, but other than that, um I really enjoyed it. I think I would definitely play it again. Yeah. I think I think it did a good job of if you have a board game from a video game you got to make it feel the same it doesn't matter how many mechanics you change or keep in the game whatever as long as it feels the same then it's successful I agree and it definitely that. yeah and it definitely felt a lot like stardew valley in terms of like you have limited actions per day you have all these different things you can do you're trying to build up a little bit i will say the one letdown for me i talked about this in the video is that it's stardew valley i feel like the big thing about stardew valley is your farm like you are building out your farm mm-hmm. you're clearing space and that is not in this game at all the the crop is just like a five slot track that you're constantly like plant a crop next turn i take off the crop it's not like caverna it's not like harvest dice it's not like a lot of other games where like you have a plot even something like uh castles of burgundy where like you are building something over the course of the game and you're turning an empty play space or play mat into something that's yours that is not in this game at all and i, I mean even I if you can yeah exactly and it's just like it's a letdown because I feel like that's a big part of the game that they really missed out on. That's lame, but I agree. Yeah, I, that, that that doesn't bother me a ton because actually, like farming is my least favorite part of Stardew. Uh, like all the other mini games, better. But like that is like at the end of the day, this is a game about farming. <laughs> like even mm-hmm. like yeah. I'm wrong for not liking the farming in Stardew. It's the point. But also, like I feel like I wonder if the designer said, "Hey, people have nailed a farming board game. We should try to nail everything else." Yeah. Um, that's yeah, because I wonder but... if they started there and all their concepts are like, "Hey, Caverna or, or Agricola or all these other ones did this way better. Let's uh, let's just try to do it." But at that time, at that point, just call the game Pelican Town. Like it's not the same. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, and it's it's tough because I feel like they built the game around they wanted to include these dozen or so mechanics, and so they <laughs> simplified each mechanic, and a majority of them work really well. But then the problem is. How do you have a dozen or so mechanics, but then one of the mechanics is enormous and you're building a giant farm? Like it doesn't, yes. yeah. It, it would be hard for them to solve that problem. And that's why I'm not holding it against them too much. It's not like an obvious solution I have in my head where you go, you idiots, why didn't you do this? Which honestly is how I approach 99% of my criticism of art. And true. so much of, of Stardew's farm building is making a custom big thing, which doesn't like, yeah. you know, work with a time sensitive board game so much. Yeah, exactly. It, w- it would have just been a completely different board game, and I think the board game they made is pretty good. But anyways, I just wanted to bring that up because uh, I think it's rare to have a video game adaptation that actually works. It's it's yeah. there's definitely more there's more success in the board game adaptations than there is in movies or TV shows. And yeah. honestly, this is just a good board game. Period. Even if you don't like Stardew Valley or or don't like video games, it's a good board game. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad uh, you've. Uh... Anything else you've been playing, or is that it? absolutely not i've been busy Woo! speaking of busy i have been busy because i'm moving so i haven't had time to do anything and when i do have time i just watch things instead because it's easier than spinning up a video game and by Um, things he means beer and board games yeah what a great show that i want to rip off um so i've (laughs) i've been playing a bunch of valheim uh i've been kind of like piecemealing it out a, because I don't want to overdo it, and B, I just want to play on stream. Like, I want to play with other people when I'm playing. Yeah. Mostly because I have, like, a ship. Like, we have the ship, and we want to make iron and everything, so I kind of want to, like, yeah. wait for people to be on. Like, Zach was going to play last night, and then he couldn't, and I was like, oh, I'll just do something else instead of playing. Um, you know, I will say, that is that is definitely a big problem I've had with Valheim, because I played for about an hour by myself this morning, clearing out some crypts in the swamp, or I would say one crypt, and I, I died about four times. And I was like full bronze armor. I was playing it right. But it's like you walk into a crypt and it's like, guess what? There's a two star drugger archer and he's going to take 70 hits, 70 HP with every hit. And it's yeah. like, well, I dodged most of his hits, but then he hits me once and I'm like, well, let me step outside and heal for five minutes. So it's it's not it's not just super solo friendly. I don't know if it's it's very, very difficult if you're solo. Yeah. Um, and I think that is a knock against the game. I agree um but valheim's still good music's still good it's it's got a good atmosphere it makes me feel warm and fuzzy um also been playing still playing assassin's creed black flag um that is a great drinking game 
uh, in which not like actual drinking game, but like s- relaxing and drinking and playing a game, uh, just running around doing nonsense, killing people. It's very fun. Uh, I, I, th- I don't know if I'm going to move on to other, uh, like I have syndicate installed as well, which, uh, watching uh giant palm play that I'm like, Oh, I want to check this out some more. Cause it seems like it's a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also have so many games on my plate. Assassin's uh, Creed Unity, come on, everyone I know. loves it. Rogue. But I, I will say, I the thing I do like about Black Flag, I like. There's a subset of games that I like to play while drinking because, like, I, there's a couple story games I really want to get into. But when it's just like a Friday night or Saturday night, I'm like, I don't want to drink and get into a story game because then what if like yeah, mess up. Yeah, or if I mess up or something, I'll be like, oh, this is stupid. So, um. And then finally, Chris and I on a Wednesday played Turning Point Fall of Liberty, a game that I totally didn't download from a Russian cracked website because it's not available anywhere. Uh, it is a Xbox 360 and PC Correct. game. I think it's PS- PS3 as well. I think uh, it's PS3, yeah. yes. Alternate history. If Winston Churchill, when struck by a cab in New York, died instead of just having a limp. Uh, and apparently that means that the Nazis did really well and that they invented flying machines and jetpacks and the MP50. <laughs> and lasers. And lasers. Uh, we had a good time oh, playing that. Vampires. Oh, yes, and vampires as well. Uh, <laughs> though we haven't seen any real vampires. We just have a vampire detecting gun. Um, it's fun. It's not good in the slightest. No, no, it is not. It but is it's also one- vaguely offensive. <laughs> Yes, it's one of the higher tier bad games we've played on this YouTube channel. Um, I it, the how long to beat was only four hours, so I think we might just finish we it. Beat it. We also, it's got big uh, chaser energy that uh, Funhouse played or Inside oh, Gamer, I should say. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I also have Legendary on the docket. I basically oh, we're taking God. a break from Chrono Trigger. As much as I love it, we need to like set aside like a four hour block to play that because we I should just do a big stream and bang some out yeah because playing that in is playing that in hour and a half segments is a real detriment to my enjoyment of it um mm-hmm. so uh but anyways yeah turning point fall liberty so check out uh, i'm cutting together a highlight because we had oh, we had some really good jokes about breath of the wild cops <laughs> who were pulling people over for their opinions on breath of the wild uh, and that was really good. Or, <laughs> was, or for steal it, or from stealing from Breath of the Wild, or stealing thing, from Breath of the Wild. Th- th- things <laughs> such as having climbing mechanics. Pull over. <laughs> pull over. <laughs> um, oh, actually, that brings me back to the other point I wanted to make, which is speaking of drunk games, I was thinking after Black Flag of playing Immortals: Phoenix Rising because I heard that's a great just like collectathon. Yeah, open world game. I think heard it properly. And then that made me think maybe I should just finally go back and play and beat Breath of the Wild. But anyways, it's a whole long list of games I need to play whilst it's drinking. Yeah, it's only a seven out of ten. Listen, a five out of what did we decide a five out of ten? No, is? it's an average game. No, I agree. What did we decide a five out of ten was? I don't uh, remember. Was it, we, had, we had a game example of it. Yeah, I said. I don't remember. The, anyways, I was trying to create a new rating system where the most average game you can ever think of is a five out of ten, and that's Mass what Effect we 3. Mass Effect Three. And that's what we base every other game mm-hmm. on. If it's better or worse than Mass Effect Three, it's, it's how it should be. Anyways, uh, Chris, what have you been playing? Uh, Valheim. We've talked about it enough. I've been playing some Valheim. <laughs> Moving on to uh, Valorant, the hit shooter from the friends over at Riot Games. Uh, it's it's CS Overwatch. Uh, it's Counter Strike, but with some abilities in it. Um, that's I like CS that's, Overwatch. That's like, a, that's like a Twitter. That's like a Twitter. No, no, it's your it joke. Like, it's your joke. Play I came it up. up with it. That's incredible. I also invented Kermit the Frog. Um, <laughs> Damn it! I also invented Times New Roman. Um, <laughs> so let me let me ask you a question: Is Valorant? good because it's in that realm of like games so, that people are crazy about but at the same time you completely ignore and be like it's probably it could be good or it could be awful it doesn't matter that fan base is going to love it anyways sorry my washer is exploding i don't know if you hear that oh, it's okay dear. you can go That's check your washer <laughs> um <laughs> uh, it's funny too because chris and i were talking about valorant at work and i was like is that even popular and he goes have you? And he like opens up. opens Twitch. And he's like, it's the number one thing on Twitch. And I'm like, oh, I yeah. Had, 
So that's the thing is I have no idea idea if it's actually, if it's actually good or not, because a lot of people play trash games like Fortnite, you know, I got into the closed alf no close beta for valorant uh-huh. and i played a decent amount of it and i thoroughly didn't like I, w- I liked it for the first like probably day or two and then i was like mm, this i don't i don't like this has it has huge glaring problems not a fan uh dropped it until like last week picked it up again because a friend of mine was like hey i want to get into overwatch i was like oh i'll give it or sorry Valorant, i'll give it another shot uh and i i'm having an absolute blast um a lot of the problems i have seems to be smoothed out mostly that there were some certain characters namely rays who have abilities that simply killed you and in a game that is basically mm. counter-strike the characters like, and, and like the ability oh, yeah. is the stick is we also have abilities you shouldn't just be able to just use the abilities and not know how to shoot a gun and win that's not that's that's adverse to the point of the game yeah um yeah but yes i've been having a, a much better time playing it i i think honestly i i can't believe i'm saying this because i i played a ton of counter-strike as a kid um i don't think i was ever good at it but i i really enjoyed my time with it i think it's a better game than counter-strike oh um, i can see that i can the see that counter strike go is more, but like yeah. the core game there is really 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 solid yeah i i can see that because counter-strike go is it's pretty much stagnant it is just it is just a prettier version of cs 1.6 oh absolutely like, absolutely yes you gotta update that somehow you know um, and they really haven't uh, and speaking of Riot Games having all of my attention and money, I've also been playing the new uh, expansion of Legends of Runeterra, which is their card game, um, which I've said this before, and I've had this opinion since basically it came out. This is the best card game that currently exists. Sorry, Artifact. Um, but like <laughs> Ma- Magic is presently in a not great state of balance and Hearthstone. I detest Hearthstone. It is a game that has only gotten worse with time. Um, every single expansion to that game is is worse and more pay to win. Uh, Legends of Runeterra, their anti-pay to win stuff is great. Um, they they like they flat out limit the amount of cards you are allowed to purchase um, to discour- oh, to good. discourage you from purchasing cards. Um, and they want you they want you to buy cosmetics, which is fine. I don't, I don't buy cosmetics in that game, but like, hey, I will power to you if you do. Um, and honestly, that that game is just it is just a really really solid card game, and I love card games. What's what's the like? What's the main mechanic in a way? You know, like magic, it's all about like you're keeping your health and you're letting your guys handle mm-hmm. it. Or like uh, in Hearthstone, they have it slightly differently where it's about like building up your mana pool in a way. So uh, Legend of Terra is the perfect medium between those two, where the main th- like power creep, I guess, in magic is uh, based around the planeswalkers and like how they can influence the game in different ways than regular cards. And of course, like, you know, it's just like rushing people down is kind of the always most effective way to win in magic red deck wins mm-hmm. um and whereas hearthstone is yes you tick up you tick up your mana every single turn and then you eventually yeah. are strong enough to smash the other one to pieces uh legendary Terror has the ticking up mana thing but also has a mana reserve so if you don't use all your mana it goes into that for later uh oh. and uh it has the champions which are the champions from league of legends uh, which all have a, a special effect that when they when they come down, they do this special thing that is unique to them. And if you do that thing enough or do something around that theme enough, they level up into a better version of themselves. Oh, that's nice. Um, um, I do have some some breaking news, though. Oh. I have just installed Legends of Runeterra. <gasps> <gasps> no breaking shot. news. Well, yeah, that a boy. Right. Ian Gibson. Uh, I, 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 if you yeah. like card games, I think you will enjoy Legends of Runeterra. I haven't met a person that likes card games and doesn't like this game. Yeah. See, the thing is, I think I do like card games. I played Magic the Gathering with some friends for about two months, borrowing their decks, and I pretty quickly realized that it's just a scam. Magic the Gathering is just like a giant scam where they're just like, we just want you to keep giving us money over and yeah, over. Yeah, get them. And I was like, no, it's like, no, absolutely not. Um, and then I played Hearthstone for a little bit, but I, I hit the same thing you were hitting where it was just like Hearthstone is just like, give us money. Give us money. It's going to make everything easier. Give us money. And I'm just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I like the core game. So I'm ready to give this a shot. It sounds like this is a good balance. Hearthstone but- from from the get was like, we, we want your money. I don't care. We yeah. want your money. Magic the Gathering also only cares about your money because it's Wizards of the Coast. All they care about is Moolah. But at the same time, Magic has always been the best. Like, it is the best card game. Yu-Gi-Oh! actually, like, High Street Yu-Gi-Oh! is really, really good. But, like, getting there is a whole thing. Um, Magic has always been really, really solid from the, the, the concept. But, and yeah. which, 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 like, was an excuse to just eat money for me in, in high school. And I played a ton of Magic in high school. Um, but like it, the the simple thing is like this. I I personally think Legend Terror is a better card game, and I, therefore Magic doesn't get my money. That's it's it, hey, that's the principle of competition, nice. baby. Could you <laughs> play Legends of Runeterra physically? No, there are no physical cards. 
I hate that then. I, I mean, mean, you can you can print them out. No one's stopping yeah, you, could, you. You can do that's proxies. True. But I mean, could you do it? Oh yeah, you you could you okay. could do it. That, that was game. mostly my question. Yeah. Um, that'd be interesting. Also, uh, Turning Point: Fall of Liberty, the only game featuring Dan Carson. <laughs> we were really hoping his name was John Liberty, but it wasn't. <laughs> I kept saying, yeah, I kept saying John and Jack. I kept. I just. I just have to say, Dan Carson is not a funny name, but I love that you guys act like it's a giant funny name now. <laughs> well, Dan I, Carson, I'm like, okay. I, I, well, I just love that they that they it, they multiple times said Dan Carson because like they want me to care oh. about this character. But it's also like such a oh, normal name. Yeah. It's like they're building a franchise on the back it, of Dan it, it, has, it has huge uh, Modern <laughs> Warfare Two Ramirez energy, featuring mm-hmm. Dan Carson from the beloved game Turning Point. Gotcha. And uh, gotcha. <laughs> featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Yeah. And Tails. Um, great. <laughs> great. Uh, I had another thing I was going to add, but I. Oh, uh, no joke. Chris thought I was doing a bit about not knowing how MOBAs work today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he's hey, like, you know what? Honestly, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> he was like, you know how League of Legends is, right? And I go, no. He goes, no, but you know how you have to blow up the Nexus. I go, no. He goes, dude, come on, you know. And I go, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was two separate times that Oral said something. I was like, I can't tell if you're doing a bit or not. <laughs> he did the he did the voice where it's like, dude, stop the bit. Like I'm trying to tell oh, you something. <laughs> <laughs> Another one was uh, Square Enix announced a thing, and I was like, "They're using the Persona font. That's weird." And he was, "You're like, he was like, yeah, of course they are." And I was like, "No, they're using the, like it. It looks like the Persona font." And he goes, "Yeah." I was like, well, Square Enix does not own Persona. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just I would assume <laughs> that the year of the JRPG. <laughs> oh, and shout out to wow. uh, OP Carl, official procrastinator, who said uh, I should just play the Outer Worlds. In Japanese and call it a JRPG. <laughs> That's a great idea. We should do that. I was like, oh just... wow. Was Wait, so idea. real quick. So you you never played Outer Worlds? I thought you had. I or you had a little bit. So I played about. I want to. It's less than ten for sure. I want to say it was like six hours of it, and Karen beat oh, the entire yeah. game. I'm remembering um, now. You did the same thing I did, where like you binged it the day it came out, and then it just quickly fell off from there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was that. Plus, she yeah. was playing it so much. That like I was like oh I'll just yeah. play things on my computer, and then I kind of so it's all her fault yeah. really. I don't. Um, I mean honestly, I don't. I don't think you need to go back if you got your taste. It's not like the rest of that game is going to be anything different. Actually, I think I would enjoy it. That's well, that's it. That's the perfect average game. Outer Wilds, Outer Worlds. Worlds. I mean, Outer Wilds is a ten out of ten. <laughs> hey, it's, it's that's a good point. Not, that's a good point. Not, I, not ten out of ten, well, but it's up. There. Like I'm viewing it as it is. It is repeating an established genre or micro micro genre, but it does it very well. Yes. It's not bringing anything new or exciting or crazy. It just does it very well. That sounds like the perfect average game. Yeah, that's our new official. You heard it here for here. You heard it folks here first. You heard it here first, folks. Well, the official nobody. rating system of local chat brought to you by Subpixel is that Outer Worlds is the five out of ten average game, and everything else yeah. is all okay, that. Here's scale. the thing. Here's the thing. You must be better think, or worse than Outer Worlds think, to get a rating. So the idea is you want a you want a bell curve where the peak of the bell is five out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I think the problem is we're forgetting that there are a vast majority of video games are worse than Outer Worlds. So that, I, I, that's not going to be the peak of the bell curve. But I'd argue a oh, vast majority of games don't merit being rated. Wait, okay, you're going to have to back that one up. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> following that. There, there, like, there is like open Steam and go and sort by new. Like there is yes. so many video games that just are not worth like even discussing. Yeah. Like they're not even worth but, looking at. But there's plenty of there's there's plenty of bad ones like like Anthem, you know, yeah. all these games that are just like. <sighs> You know what? I this the is what I'm going to do. 1886. This is what I'm going to do. Creed since Creed could be a good since we're inventing things here, this is going to be like the giant bomb fighting games, where the only games that are on the list are the ones we've rated on the list. Yeah. So as like of that. right now, I'll write this down afterwards. Our list of the best games of all time, or of games of all time, is a five out of ten is the Outer Worlds. And that's the only thing on the list right now. Maybe at some point we'll add something else. What? But I don't think we call it a. I don't think we call it a five out of ten. It's a one out of one right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I was thinking, what? 
<laughs> maybe maybe you put all the numbers and put an example game to what fits in that category. Do we so just like maybe average the six? Best Effect three is a no, five. I, something like that. I like the idea of if there are seventeen games on the list, the number three is the fourteen. Oh, best but it's game. yeah, it would be reverse order, so it would be a fourteen out of seventeen. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Writing system. Uh, save the chat. I'm assuming that's Zach, or it could be also David in the chat noting uh, someone didn't beat Breath of the Wild. Wait. And um, you know, to be fair, it doesn't matter because the 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 beat of Breath of the Wild is just like two percent of the game that is not that great. I, 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 I will mean, say, the rest I mean, of it that there's, no, there's no difference in the amount of story you're getting from watching yeah. the opening cutscene and beating the game. That's true because there is no story in between those two points. The reason I stopped yeah. playing it is because I was I started it on the Wii U and then I bought a switch oh. and moved to new jersey and rebought it on the switch and started over and then i was like that's a bad idea and then i've never touched it since that game oh, is yes, great it has like honestly like, honestly i i give breath of wild guff mostly in jest like it other than the two huge flaws of the basically non-existent story and the durability system it's a pretty damn good game i have qualms yeah. about it being one of those mile deep uh inch sorry mile wide inch deep open worlds but some people disagree with me on that so yeah yeah it's yeah if you haven't played much of it it's definitely worth playing anyways folks outer worlds is a one out of one as of right now um so moving on from that we are going into the news and i don't know if folks have heard but we have a brand new spanking new news theme that is gonna just rock your socks (laughs) i'm gonna go ahead and play it right here and then we will get into the news We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Awesome. That was um, Love it. Randy Newman himself wrote oh, that. Let me check my for- Five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> um, folks, it has been an interesting week in the news. In so much of there has been a lot of business news and not much game nas news. Um, I don't know. Shut up, Ian. You're not the host. I am, and I can mute you at any point. Um, Thank you where I am. <laughs> Where were you when I started local chat? You were here with me, right here. Uh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Except next week. <laughs> um. Oh, okay, I'm gonna start off this lovely thing. Um, talking about uh Bethesda, the acquisition of Bethesda or ZeniMax by Xbox. I'm not going to go too deep into this. It was approved earlier this week, uh, and it was officially uh, welcomed yesterday. And they had a live stream today where they announced a lot of things, including uh, Phil Spencer saying that future games that don't have previous exclusivity deals will be exclusive to platforms with Game Pass, which is fairly vague enough to say, Mm -hmm. for right now, is going to be xbox pc and cloud mobile uh way that that is written does sound like what if we brought games past to playstation <laughs> i mean well, i wouldn't blame them they i think mean, microsoft would love that because they <laughs> wanted like, to yeah. for on switch for a while there was wasn't there that plan to bring game pass and then uh there was the yeah. xbox app that was being added to yeah. i don't think anything ever i think nintendo backed down on it you know i'm just gonna say right now uh, it may not work, but there is a chance that when Microsoft releases their browser-based cloud, yes. that it would work on the PS5. Yes. I said that in the save data chat during their, uh, right. their stream. There's the thing of the Xbox Series X was the best thing to digitally run a PlayStation 2 emulator. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can, on an Xbox Series X in Internet Explorer, you can stream Steam games to your xbox and, and and the controller works and the controller works which yeah, is crazy awesome. that's yeah um so uh, i just want to mention this because it's cool it's like big exciting news i uh, i like that microsoft's kind of gearing up to be like hey we need games and i'm glad phil spencer's at least seeing that they need games um i'm excited for indiana jones excited for starfield elder scrolls 6 um and everything's a lot of things are coming to game pass uh it actually dropped today even though it's supposed to be tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I was checking my PC Game Pass. Um, I'm looking forward to playing. So I think I'm going to play Morrowind or Oblivion. I love Oblivion. But I think it's time as an adult to play Morrowind because as a kid, I just killed people and stole things from them. 
uh, even though that is genuinely a good time. Also, I, it's funny. There's about I didn't even realize it because you always forget how overreaching Bethesda is. There's like five games that were just added that I've thought about buying in the past year, and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't buy that um, because it's <laughs> Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I did buy Skyrim last year. And I haven't played it yet, but didn't need to. I own it like 10 times. Uh, anyways, that's, I just want to touch on that quick because uh, I thought that was cool. Also, are they going to be less litigious now that Microsoft owns them? ZeniMax? God, I hope so. I hope so, They have too. threatened to sue me multiple times. That is not a joke or an exaggeration. As an employee, they like to threaten lawsuits all the time. It's quite frankly ridiculous. Oh yeah, I was telling Chris about how long how long did you work there and what did you what did you do? Explain to the did audience. You, right? at, yeah, I worked at uh, ZeniMax Online Studios, uh, who was making or continues to make Elder Scrolls Online. I was there for nine months as a QA intern, which is basically their like onboarding program. They basically hire you as an intern and then convert you to full time, except they were doing quote unquote layoffs. So they just said if you're if you're an intern, you're not getting a full time position. And I was there when the game launched. So I had some of that mandatory Ooh. crunch. I had a lot of, I was there the in the studio the morning that they launched the servers as part oh, of like wow. that QA support team. Um, so yeah, so I was only there nine months, but I, I, I did a lot of work on it. I was doing like 50, You, you were there for the one time that game wasn't supposedly good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had some issues. It had some issues. It's always been like a, it's a, it's a five out of 10 game. I'll say it. It's not terrible. I mean, I, I I know a lot of people that are into like pretty heavy MMO, like MMO rating parties, and they say that like that game has ended up being really good. Yeah, they've added a lot to it, and a lot of the a lot of the people who made the raids and trials in that game have gone on to work for a lot of the other MMO studios, including building the raids in Destiny, etc. Oh, Destiny interesting. Too. Yeah. So wait, is Elder Scrolls Online a one out of two now? How does our rating system work? Oh, oh Will, it's clearly a three it's out of three per episode. One per episode. One per episode. Will. Okay. Ooh, okay. That's good. That's good. So it's that's only good. Outer Wilds, which is yeah, Outer yeah, Worlds, yeah. which is a one out of one. That's gonna be a nightmare in eleven yeah. episodes, but okay. Oh. Yeah. Just to, just to bring it back full circle, they um when I got hired, when I did my interview, they made me sign an NDA and they said we will sue you if you break it. Like not just in like the paperwork, but they they like to say that to your face. <laughs> uh, at some point when I was there, somebody threw away like uh content design docs in the bathroom and the bathroom was in like the lobby area which means other companies could have gotten access to it and they like sent out an email and they're like well, you don't throw this away in the bathroom you should be eating it throwing it away firing it whatever blah 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 but if you don't do this we're gonna sue you and it was just like okay when i left the company during the exit interview they were like remember don't say anything we'll sue you like they just <laughs> Bunch um, of assholes. Minimax loves, so. loves doing people like Nintendo loves sen sending cease and desists. Mm -hmm. oh, that's incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, honestly, I would say they probably will stop being so litigious because it doesn't seem like Microsoft is that that hard edge about it. Yeah, I, I I feel like they're probably. I mean, when acquisitions like that happen, there's at least a little bit of change to company culture that kind of seeps in. Um, yeah. And especially when it's a company as big and powerful as Microsoft acquiring someone, this isn't like full screen buying something. This is this, this is this is friggin' Microsoft. Yeah. They made the computer. Yeah, yeah. Plus, plus, uh, ZeniMax. A lot of the founders on the original board members, etc., were lawyers. It was a very uh, law heavy company, uh, and I think they just carry that mentality of we'll just throw lawsuits around whenever we feel like it. Like at and Bioware, they just Microsoft heal you. They threatened to heal you at Bioware because it was started by doctors. Started by doctors. And weren't they dentists? Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, it was two two doctors who like they to... met at a at a convention for like medic a medical convention, and they were like, "Hey, you like video games? Let's <laughs> make a video game." Yeah, my patients Wait, keep I... dying. We should play video games instead. <laughs> what if we What if we made two really good games and then just a lot of bad games, but people keep buying them and thinking they're good? Hey, is that your anthem? Two... That sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Throw all your hands up. What if we made two bad, two two good video games, a bunch of bad ones, another good one, and then a bunch more bad ones? <laughs> hey, wait. Let me do my take on it. What if we made three bad games, <laughs> and then two good ones, ones, and then <laughs> four <laughs> bad ones? I mean, stand back. You gotta remember, in the middle of Mass Effect, they're like, "What if we dropped a banger, and then nothing else good in this franchise?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? 
Uh, oh. Chris, uh, you mentioned Artifact earlier, and you know things about cards. You want to talk uh, about how Valve stopped Artifact? Va- Valve, the Google of canceling projects. That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, Valve, Valve, very similar to Google, loves uh, making a project, putting a lot of stuff behind it, and then just going, eh. And then just yeah. immediately just abandoning ship on it instantly. Um, Valve, uh, out of nowhere, kind of what, three years ago, dropped Artifact, which was their uh, a So rather than a TCG, this is an LCG, a limited card game, which means uh, basically you have all of the cards. Like when you pay the price of admission, you just have all the cards at your disposal. Disposal. Sorry. You can build a deck and you can go play. This was Artifact, a which I had, had a $20 price tag and came out... I think like within weeks of Magic Arena, which is Magic the Gatherings, they took it took them a million years, but to get there, this is our here is Magic the Gathering digitally. That's all the game is. Like it's there's no no bullshit. We're not, not duels of the planeswalkers, any of that other crap magic variants. It's just here's the game, playable on your computer, and it looks okay. That's all and, and guess what? It made a bajillion dollars because it's it's friggin' Magic the Gathering and people have been asking for it for twenty years and they finally put it on a computer. Um, anyway, yeah, it came out like right around that time. So shocker, a $20 price tag to entry, uh, a completely unknown brand new card game failed. <laughs> um, yep. and, uh, valve finally announced today. Yeah. Not only are we like giving up on this entirely, it, we're going to, we'll make it free to play that way. It's out there in the internet in case anyone ever wants to play it ever. Here's the thing about artifact. It's good. It's pretty, it's honestly like, it's really good, but nobody played it. Um, and that, that that's not Artifact's fault. That's 100% Valve's fault. There's no, like... I thought Artifact had, like... Uh, uh, um, what's the name of... Uh, Microtransaction? Dota. I thought it had Dota characters in it and stuff. It does. Yeah. I'm reading oh, the wiki. I wouldn't know that because I don't play Dota. Uh, um, yeah, but, it, uh, it has three lanes and a tower you are defending. Yes, and so it, 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 unlike yeah. unlike Gwent, like which the the full version of Gwent is terrible, whereas like the one in game in the Witcher games is good. Unlike all these other adaptations, like Artifact is good. It is a core good mm-hmm. card game, but just flat out nobody played it because it was a twenty dollars price tag. I think it might have been actually forty dollars. I'm thinking about it. Uh, Oof. game released by Valve. Uh, and like Valve is a company that has made so much goddamned money you would think they would know how to make money <laughs> like yeah I, it's a card yeah. game do what every card game ever has done and just fucking sell packs or cosmetics it's a, it's it it simply isn't hard <laughs> yeah or sell hats at least you love selling Anything. hats yeah that's uh, I I mean, I know Gabe Newell just talked about how like Valve is working on new things, but like what well, like Valve doesn't really do new well. Valve does here is the thing you know us for, but again, in a in a new variant, like I mean like look at the transition from like Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2 and then Half-Life Alex, like like taking a the core thing and just improving it with whatever the new tech is. But like every time I swear to God, every time they just try to like take something. Dota's an example of this. I mean, Dota makes a crap ton of money, but like they like what whenever they try to innovate something that isn't like a core Val property, they have no clue what the hell to do. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I I really like this story, as sad as it is, because Valve put a lot of money and effort behind this and they failed. And I think that shows that the video game community and video game fans are actually pretty discerning. And you can't just throw money at something and expect it to stick. It's not like Marvel movies where you can just throw $500 million behind it and put a bunch of IP behind it and people will eat it up like it's Citizen Kane. You know, yeah. no, you got to actually make something good. And this is a big, highfalutin, quadruple A effort. And it failed. And I'm kind of happy that it shows, you know what? Valheim sold 5 million copies in its first week because it's a fantastic game. And not to say Artifact is a bad game, but it had a lot more resources behind it and it failed. So yeah. it's not just about the resources you put behind it. Look at Marvel's Avengers. I mean, that was a, like, that was yep. a huge, gigantic budget game with Mar- with Marvel. The first, sorry, the first word in that title is Marvel and that game <laughs> failed. Yep. Yep. Ugh. Ugh. Whatever. Yeah. Um, great. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I... I own Artifact, apparently, just like I own Half Life Alex. Don't know why. You uh, <laughs> I don't. 
I work at Valve. I'm Greg Greg Newell. <laughs> Gabe Newell's brother. Greg, Greg. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I'm just, before we go off of Artifact, I'm reading through the Wikipedia, and I just remembered that the original Artifact, the thing that really killed it was, if I remember, there is a limit on how many free cards you can get. So, like, as you kept playing the game, they would give you free cards, but there was, like, a solid limit of, like, you are only allowed to earn X number of free cards, and after that point, you had to buy more cards. Oh, that was no, the thing right. that killed you're it. You're right. They didn't, the, the, yeah. they later went and gave everyone every card, but yes. it was already too late. You're right. You're 100% right about that. Yeah, so you had to pay, like, 20 bucks or whatever it was to buy the game, and they were also, like, you got to pay on top of that or trade with other people to get the rest of these yes! cards or the cards they you wanted want. you to trade with people via the steam yeah. inventory Woo! never yeah. forget there's a lot of cool ideas in there but just the no, way they not. monetized it and they put a cap on it was just like no don't do this that's crap that's crap yeah yeah Woo! card games are bad folks uh anyways uh that's actually true unfortunately. <laughs> ian uh anything here suit your fancy to talk about yeah, I just want to talk about uh, there's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat em up that's been announced from the developers of Scott Pilgrim uh, versus the uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World the Game. Um, did you guys ever play those old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle beat em up games? Yes, I did. Arcade, yeah, I loved baby. So, I loved them. Um, and arcade Scott games, Pilgrim game kicks ass. And Street Trades 4 kicks ass. Yeah. So these are good games. This I I've never been a huge fan of beat 'em up games, but I always really like the the older Team NT ones, and so I'm excited to to give this a shot. And you know they've got the pedigree. Um, I'm ready to play this four player, probably online four player. I'm guessing, unspecified yeah, release. It has to be. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Awesome. Um, yeah, I I feel like beat 'em ups. I played uh the X Men apocalypse i think it was apocalypse that for the super nintendo that's a beat em up i played that a butt ton mm -hmm. as a child um and of course the turtle ones uh never played streets of rage i should probably do that four is good we can play online if you want for a stream i own it now i don't want to i will fuck you it's on game pass <laughs> now oh, i yeah. want to wow see i just also didn't... has some profoundly horny art in it <gasps> now i really want to <laughs> that sold him <laughs> the other Promise. thing i really want to do speaking of horny oh <laughs> Hogwarts. yes Hogwarts Legacy. uh disintegration uh, developer v1 interactive shuts down Nothing um, makes me horny, like, out of i don't is it i'm sorry this is gonna sound really mean but is this is this news who cares what is this i don't understand it I was mean, well, it was the Halo co-creator left and it started his own studio. Then they announced the game. I think it was at E3. They had like a cool trailer showing the thing. You were like, man, this game's going to be really cool. And then the game like oh. demo came out and everything. And you piloted like a glider yeah, and you made the team go into the house and like kill people and stuff. And then yeah. it didn't do very well because I, A, I don't think it was marketed very well. And B, I don't think no, it well. it's a very good game. On top of that, it, yeah, I, I it's one of the few games I returned on Steam. Um, it 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 feels it's just it's the the glider is so floaty and like oh, yeah, like flying around and then stopping to tell your dudes what to do is very awkward. Has big Tom Clancy's End War energy in a bad way. Yeah, and why would yeah. like I want to be in the action doing stuff? Not I should switch into one yeah. of those dudes and then yeah. boot you through the house. Or the, the, what I thought when it first announced is like your friends were the people. And it was like an ace asymmetrical, not asymmetrical, mm -hmm. but one person was that person, and like other yeah. people went into yeah, the yeah. house. Like that would be cool, but yeah, it's just like I'm watching. I'm watching the gameplay. It almost feels like somebody like really liked to mess around with no clip in the console and a bunch of first person shooters, and was like, "Let's make a whole game like this." But then in doing so, they took out a lot of the magic of going behind the scenes and having infinite powers, and so it's just this weird like. Like you're just moving around in the space without any sort of momentum, and it's yeah. I can. Yeah. I, I I think the big story here is that this was a game that was supposed to be a big deal. It had some had some name power behind it, uh, and it was mm -hmm. supposed to. And it was it was a uh, developer team that was coming out like, hey, we're doing something new, crash and burn, and that developer is now dead, which means that like, hey, stop trying to do new things. Yeah, and like I, they had a main. I want to say it was Microsoft 
that they were on someone's E3 stage. Like they came out, the guy came out and everything and it looked yeah. cool, but yeah, that sucks. I hope those people find uh new work and quickly and uh, efficiently and safely during the uh, pandemic. Anyways, uh, moving on, Christopher, you're up. Oh, for a topic? Topic, or baby. Uh, topic. Uh, or news. Re- oh, no, oh, we're in news. But, I mean, <gasps> you could choose a topic. Uh, well, we're talking about the news here. Zach introduced the news. We got a big news topic that we haven't touched Let's on. talk. Let's just talk about it. Ian made a video about it with, his, with those weird perverts on the internet. Um, right. Hey, <sighs> I'm that weird pervert on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, you Cut danced that. with eleven-year-olds. How do you feel about I that? I don't know. Who, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who they. Uh, they were so, so mad God. at you too. That's the best part. Right, get out of the way. They're making a music video. <laughs> They're making a TikTok, and you ruined it, Ian. Uh, um, they have. Let's talk about friggin' Roblox. Roblox. I don't care how it's oh, pronounced. Boy. Uh, so Roblox is a video game on the internet. It's basically like an in-house. Uh, market for weird mini games, but you can also make weird mini games, and there's microtransactions because, of course, there is. Um, and it went on to the New York Stock Exchange and most stock exchanges, uh, to yesterday, the time I was recording, and um, it uh, is allegedly worth as of today 40 billion with a B dollars. That is, as someone had noted earlier, uh, I think Imran Khan on Twitter, six Bethesdas. <laughs> that's that's right. Roblox, a video game where eleven-year-olds dance around with Ian Gibson, is worth six <laughs> Bethesdas. Make hide such hide your kids, folks. As Fallout, <laughs> you might is. have heard of it, and Skyrim, you've heard of it. Yeah. Um, uh, this is insane. This is market bloat in the most literal sense. Um, uh, and probably also some bloating fetishes. I don't know what's going on in Roblox. Um, and uh. Uh, like so so i will say i will say go ahead please take this away from me god i don't want to talk about it anymore (laughs) i definitely i definitely think there is some market bloat there in people just expecting this to take off because they think roblox is big and therefore they're driving up the share price but they did release roblox now that they're public they have to release some some financials oh my god the amount of money they made this year Yes, the first quarter of 2021, they are expecting revenue of 320 million to 335 million dollars, representing year-over-year growth of approximately 100. percent So they're wow. expecting to make 1.1, 1.2 billion dollars this year alone in revenue. So they they do have a lot of subscribers. The Daily Active is 37 to 39 million users <laughs> in this past quarter. Daily Active. Jeez. Yes. It's it's insane. Wait, it's, hold on. So, is that is that more than league? Is 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 that the most popular game in the world? It's it's probably is. That's kids insane. are all over it, man. And the thing is because they're kids, they're just like Stupid. microtransacting <laughs> like crazy because they have no sense of like of like worth or like self-worth, let alone like game <laughs> worth. It's not their money that they're spending, you know, it's oh. their parents' money. So it's, it's also like, like that fine line of like when I was watching you your video there's that fine line of like think about yourself at 11 12 13 and like puberty and being like oh i can play i can get this character who looks kind of like a sexy lady for like five dollars and like that's your access it's like oh my parents because a lot of parents are more like than our parents are more aware of internet and stuff so they probably have locked things down to a certain point so it's like yeah yes even an outreach of like uh, and not necessarily that but like also violent and not violence but like oh i here's a cool guy from a movie i wasn't allowed to go see or a game i'm not yeah, allowed to exactly. play so it's all those things tied into one that it's just like hey mom can i have some money for this kids game and it's like okay yeah ian was that 37 million was that concurrent or is that a like average for a day that is um daily active users average over okay. the first quarter of 2020 okay no no no. it's not it's not even close to league it, it, it is however very close to Fortnite, and i and probably a lot of days over Fortnite. Yeah, it's it's um this is definitely one of those games where I agree there's definitely market bloat, but there is also a huge fan base here that we do not interact with at all. Uh, we've talked previously about Hello Neighbor and how that game took off. I don't know why it wasn't that great of a game to the point where it just had merchandising deals all over Walmart, etc. And it's just like, what is happening? This is a gaming sphere that I'm not interacting with 
at all. The same as like those uh, those Kardashian games, which apparently make boatloads of money. The yes. mobile Kardashian games. Oh wow, really? It's it's crazy. They are the most yeah. pro- most profitable part of their brand, like more than the shows, more than the fashion lines. I didn't even it's know the that. mobile games. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, wow. I, I you know I I do want to. I do want to I do want to have a little bit of here, though. I do. I, I do want to have a silver lining here. The thing about Roblox, though, is that it's introducing. This is not some. I don't want to say it's not a crap game, but it's pretty good training wheels for introducing a lot of different types of games. Yeah. You know how to play online, how to deal with microtransactions, how to deal with like level up mechanics, how to deal with building mechanics, how to deal with like first person shooting controls. So the idea is. You know, like my my nephew started playing. He was big into Roblox a couple of years ago, and now you know I I played Halo with him over Xbox Live, and and he's he's ten. So it's one of those things where right. it's like, it's it's like Roblox itself is not a great game, but it's pretty good training wheels for kids so that they become future gamers. That um, this is going to sound very pretentious, but that we can respect and game with. These are not people that are going to move on to Candy Crush, and then when in their thirties they're going to move on to the Kardashian mobile game. No, they've got taste and, and that they develop through Roblox and they're going to move on to these bigger games and we're going to be playing with them in multiplayer servers side by side in a couple of years. So it's, I mean, one of those popular games on Roblox is a really competent CSGO clone. Yep. And you you have yeah. people, you have kids learning how to friggin uh, uh, entry frag and bunny hop in R- Roblox and then they can go play Valorant and CSGO and hey, they kind of know what's going on. That's crazy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's like it's it's not quite Sesame Street in that there's definitely a lot of stuff that should not be shown to kids, um, but it it does do a good job of like introducing and improving children's gaming literacy so that they are ready for these big AAA titles down the line. And I'm yeah. all with more weird game representation on the stock market. Yes, yeah. yeah. Epic Games somehow isn't on there yet, but like, can you when when they show up? Oh my god! Oh my just god! Holding to stockholders or reveal too much of their financial. Yeah, yeah, Tim, yeah, Tim Sweeney. Tim, uh, Tim Sweeney. Tim Sweeney sitting on his on his throne of cash doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, actually, one more note. Uh, Chris, I know you wanted to mention Dream ba- Dream Bound or Dream Gate. Dawn Gate. Dream Dawn Gate. Dream Dawn Gate. Game. I don't know why we decided to write this down, but uh, Ian Gibson, you famously tried Hi. League of Legends and hated it because it features the last hit system. Which is a yeah, common like thing in MOBAs. I mean, basically all of them, except for Heroes of Storm, which sucks. Uh, where yeah. in order to get the most efficient uh, gold income, so you can buy items, so you can win the game, is to be the last person to hit a thing. Therefore, when it goes, you the money goes into your body. Nice. Um, and you hate that system. I, I I play League all the time. It means nothing to me. That's just how reality is. Um, it's like capitalism. I'm just used to it. Um, even if it's all, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Dawngate was the MOBA made by EA or, or being funded by EA during the, the boom when everyone was making a friggin' MOBA. Heroes of New Earth was a thing people cared about. Smite existed. Um, and uh, I mean, Smite still exists, but who gives a crap? Uh, Dawngate was uh, being made by a super small team. I think it was like 10, 20 people uh, called Studio, I want to say Waystone, uh, maybe Wayfinder. Um, and uh, the game was amazing. It was great. Uh, and the main things it did uh, to shake up the MOBA format were the following things. Uh, so you hate the last hit system. Um, what if at the beginning of the game, you got to pick how you gained gold that game and you could pick between last hitting. So no, as an individual player, uh, and there are five archetypes. Uh, there's one where it's like, you're the person who goes and last hits stuff and you can, that's how you make money. Or you can just be near that, like be in combat and be engaging with what's going on in the lanes. Uh, and that way you will gain. How does that work? Because like, if you have people on the team who choose different things. So how it's designed is that like so in like MOBAs so okay this is gonna get kind of nitty gritty into how League of Legends works. Ooh, but in the, back. I know, sorry. Uh, but like in the bottom lane, League of Legends, you have an AD carry whose job is to shoot the minions and get the money, and a support yeah. whose job is to keep that person alive and gain money by yeah. shooting at the other champions. Yeah. Um. Uh. So what you you could pick a role in Dawngate to be a I believe hunter whose job it was was to shoot the minions and get money that way or a tactician who as long as they're staying near combat that is happening so like that like that they are passively gaining money or a or okay, so you, it's kind of like built in the role yes yeah. exactly and you select that in like when you select your character 
you select like yeah. i want to play this character and i want to be a predator this game which means i yeah. am going in, i i i get a ton of money if i kill someone um mm-hmm. but i don't get a lot of money other ways so i'm i'm, yeah. I'm, com- I'm committing to being feast or famine or I can be a I want to say I don't the jungler role in League of Legends where I'm going to I'm going to do stuff outside of lanes and as long as I'm yeah. doing stuff there I'm gaining money that way. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. The idea of like you are picking what your strategic role is and the game is reinforcing that behavior by rewarding you for sticking to yeah. that. And it's and it's not locked. Shot. League of Legends is like soft locked to these characters are supports, these characters are junglers, these characters are carries. Whereas Dongate really didn't do that. It was kind of like you can I mean anyone can do this. It because like you get you get the yeah. same amount of gold no matter what. It doesn't matter what, what character you are. Um yeah. And uh the main right. awesome thing about this also that I wanted to mention is that uh instead of a nexus like in League of Legends just a big thing you shoot at uh, the nexus on both sides is a big gigantic boss that has power ups that are based around pillars on the map that you have to break. Uh, or otherwise, oh, it, and it, it, when you get there, it throws abilities at you, and you're fighting it and the enemy team, which is <laughs> rad. I don't know. I just feel like the MOBA genre is so insular now that new quote unquote new MOBAs yeah. are really just variations on established mechanics. That's hundred percent and. True. As somebody who isn't into MOBAs, I would really love to see something come along and just like take, I don't want to say barely be a MOBA, but just break a whole lot of that conventions and actually do something new where it feels like a lot of them are just like, what if we take this little tiny mechanic and do it this way instead? And it's like, I really want somebody to break out of that space instead I mean, of continue it, to dig deeper into it. It does feel like MOBAs are begging for an Apex Legends which will come along yeah. like like something something that will come along using an established format make a couple of small tweaks that end up kind of like break breaking the foundation of the game and making yeah. it work so much better i mean yeah adding exactly. abilities to battle royales i mean i i flat out think saved that genre yeah i mean yeah. apex is number four on steam all the time forever a a yeah. turning point fall of liberty uh you would say yes please the sonic 06 of battle royale <laughs> oh ladies anyway, and gentlemen sorry just wrap up anyway Dongate is oh. uh, being brought back as Dreambound. they made a baj- bajillion dollars in kickstarter go support that i want it back this is only for me this is incredibly selfish give me He's a selfish boy, ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to be it for the news this week. Unless you guys have anything else you would like to talk about. Uh, I was going to bring up, I'm working on a new PC build, but we're not going to talk about that now. I'm going to save that for a Valheim stream because that's much more fun. Uh, I'm going to go over here and start the music. And we're going to make our merry way onto the train and out of the station. Folks, thank you for tuning in this week. I have been Will Crosby. Below me has been Ian Gibson. Okay, look, Will, we need to talk about this real quick. You need to stop saying it like that because it sounds like you're saying blow me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Blow me is Ian Gibson and off to the side blowing him is Chris Elliott from Save Data. You can find their stuff at Save Data Team on YouTube as well as Twitch and the socials. You can find our stuff. Subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out hot videos like our Valheim streams that we mentioned and many other videos, including Ian's Stardew Valley board game review that came out just yesterday, folks. Until then, we will be back streaming on Saturday. Ian, you're going away on Friday, which means you won't be here this weekend, which means i got to figure out what the heck I'm going to do on yep. Saturday. That should be fun. Uh oh. Chris knows what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to let the song go a little bit longer because it's lo- it's always longer than I think it is, which is great. Uh, Love it. This has been episode 10, folks. No, it ends so perfectly. Um, yeah. You know, you know what? It's so close. It's just. Just anyway, guys. Uh, anyways, guys. Uh, oh, check out my OnlyFans. Boy. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for listening to this, and we will see you all next week, folks. See you later.